maximum security from a medium security jail. What happened was, my parents came up with money for an attorney. All my money was seized and taken. And he came to jail and said, we go court, have a hearing, get your bail reduced, and you can fight your case on the streets. So I went to court. We had, it seems to have gone really well. My uncle, uh, ex-police officer, spoke on my behalf, offered to put his house up. But the prosecutor was trying to make her name off the back of my case. She sabotaged the hearing behind the scenes, and the judge he ends up doubling my bail to $1.5 million, cash only. Now, when your bail goes over a million, you automatically have to be classified from medium security to max. So the night I was moved into maximum security, um, this is what happened. <laughs> Delirious from two days sleep deprivation, I was looking forward to a good rest. I thought my standard of living had improved. Two-man cell, bottom bunk, until I noticed movement on the walls. Putting movement down to hallucinations, I blinked several times. Still movement. Stepping closer, I saw the wall was alive with insects. I flinched. So many, I wondered if they were colony of ants on the move, just like you see in documentaries. To get a better look, I put my eyes right up to them. The insects were the size of almonds and had antennae, American cockroaches. I'd seen them in other areas of the jail, but nothing like this. A chill spread over my body. I backed away from the wall. As my night vision picked up, I spotted more insects on the ceiling, going in and out of the base of the strip light. Every so often, one dropped onto the concrete and resumed crawling. Examining the bottom bunk, it dawned as to why my cellmate had opted to sleep at a higher elevation. Cockroaches were pouring from gaps in the wall at the level of the bunk. The air was thick with them. Placing my mattress on the bottom bunk scattered them. I walked toward the toilet, crunching a few of them under my shower sandals. I urinated and grabbed the toilet roll. A cockroach darted from the centre of the roll onto my hand, tickling my fingers. My arm jerked as if it had a mind of its own, losing the cockroach and the toilet roll. Using a towel, I wiped most of them off the bottom bunk, stopping only to shake the odd one off my hand, and rolled my mattress. They began to regroup and harass my mattress. My adrenaline was pumping so much, I lost my general fatigue. Nauseous, I sat on a stool, contemplating how best to sleep. I wondered how my cellmate was sleeping through the infestation of my arrival. I decided to copy his technique. I cocooned myself in a white sheet and lay down, crushing a few more cockroaches. The only way they could get to me now was through the breathing hole I left in the sheet by the lower half of my face. Inhaling the strange musty odour, I closed my eyes. I couldn't sleep. I felt them crawling on the sheet around my feet. Or was I imagining things? Frightened of them infiltrating my breathing hole, I kept opening my eyes. Cramps caused me to shift onto my other side. Facing the wall, I was repulsed by so many of them just inches away. I returned to my original side. The sheet trapped the desert heat to my body, drenching me in sweat. Sweat tickled my body, tricking my mind into thinking the cockroaches had infiltrated and were crawling on me. Every now and then I became so uncomfortable, I had to open my cocoon to waft the heat out. It took hours to drift to sleep, and I only managed a few hours. I awoke, stuck to the soaked sheet, disgusted by the cockroach carcasses compressed to the mattress. At 8 o'clock at night, you were locked in the cell at max. At 10 o'clock is what's called lights out. Let the cockroaches know just when the lights are about to go out. They line up with cracks in the walls, doing this little movement with antennae sticking out. And as soon as the lights go out, they just flood the room. Now, like you heard, you put a sheet around you, so like the mummy. But it traps the desert heat to your body, and you've got these bleeding skin infections and bed sores that are itchy. It aggravates that condition, so you end up just throwing them off you. They don't bite, but they tickle your feet, your limbs, they try and get in your ears to eat your earwax, it's like honey to them. And the neighbour, who was asthmatic at this time, in maximum security, he wakes up one morning, he's out of breath, grabs his inhaler, takes a blast, oh. and it. It's stuck inside him, he throws his stomach contents up, and he can't get it out. Even in the daytime, there were so many, the guys were doing cockroach races on the day room tables, gambling Snickers bars on the winner. The first thing in the morning, you see them all come up their cell with little plastic containers that trap, um, use peanut butter to trap cockroaches in during the night. But it didn't matter how many we killed, it was like they owned the building. Now what happened was, because of all these human rights violations, 